probably when are we going to be able to stop all the restrictions and precautions and what I try to explain to people is that there's a lag period. What we're seeing now reflects the disease transmission that occurred two to four weeks ago. So because we are still in the midst of this, the reality of it is we have to wait until that curve begins to bend down and then wait another two to four weeks before we can say, okay, probably all clear. Certainly in places like uh, New York City, we are seeing an explosion in cases. Uh, in places like South Korea that started about the same time we did, they clamped down with restrictions very early in the course of their disease and their outbreak, and we've seen that curve bend down. So both are happening. Um, the thing that concerns us is the peak of the pyramid, the ones who are uh, severely ill, who require a lot of medical support and care. New York City hospitals are, are really desperate for supplies and ventilators. So this is a serious issue. I think uh, every scientist uh, and physician that has uh, talked about this uh, has said the same thing. Now is not the time to talk about relaxing restrictions. We have not yet reached the peak of what this pandemic can and will do in the US. So we need to stay the course here. We need to work together. We need to be logical. And then we need to watch, wait, be informed by the best data that we can get. That's part of bending this curve or flattening the curve is another term used. The idea is simple but profound. You simply cannot get infected with this virus if you don't breathe it in or you don't introduce it to your, into your body with your fingers. So you run the lowest risk of either of those happening by being distant from people, not being in public areas, working from home, whatever it takes to prevent person-to-person -person transmission. Uh, compared to SARS in 2002, that dampened down within six, eight months, but that did not have asymptomatic transmission to other people. This virus does transmit asymptomatically. This virus has a relatively high, what's called reproductive number, which is just a measure, if I get infected, how many people on average do I spread it to? We've learned that while children tend not to get severely ill or die from it, younger adults certainly do, and they have a misperception about the severity of the disease. We've also learned how this virus causes disease and in whom, in the older adults, in people who have corresponding medical problems that increase their risk. A number of studies have been done. These show that you can uh, detect the virus off of hard surfaces, public surfaces, for as long as 17 days. When they went back into the Diamond Princess, this ship had been empty for 17 days, and yet they could find the virus. So uh, it, it really depends on the temperature, depends on the humidity, depends on exposure to UV light. I think the key thing is this is not some exotic virus that is hard to inactivate. This is readily inactivated by dilute bleach solutions and appropriate disinfectants. Anything that somebody who is infected touches, the virus can survive on that surface. It looks like um, plastic, stainless steel tend to be surfaces where it lasts longer. Uh, all it says to us is you've got to practice good hand etiquette and sanitation. So you pump your gas, you sanitize your hands. You go out to shop, you don't touch your face, you don't come into your home. And, or into your car until you've sanitized your hands.